Hey guys, welcome back to Fire Hill. My name is Matt. Today we're going to do some re-splitting from this uh, Chinese processor. Um, I have two baskets behind me. We're going to time it and see how much time it really takes to uh, get through these two baskets of uh, split wood. If it's a good size, I'm just going to throw it on the conveyor. If it's too big, I'm going to re-split it with the uh, Woodfridge 28C. It's really windy out here, guys, so hopefully y'all can hear me since I got the mic on. Um, but these are the two baskets we have here. I can only get two on this side of the wolf fridge at a time, so I figured I'd just time this, add five minutes to uh, get in the tractor and moving two more in here, um, and then we'll call it good on that. But we're going to use the uh, wolf fridge 28 for a C on this, up to the uh, conveyor into the four IBC totes over here. So if you look here, guys, I think these two baskets are from the 8-way and 12-way, um, just because I'm seeing big pieces like this. Um, so you're looking at anywhere from 8 inches down to, you know, a couple inches. Um, so we're going to re-split a lot of this. What I'm trying to get at is around this size right here, or even smaller. So I got a lot of comments about why I'm splitting poplar. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, that's terrible wood. While poplar is not a good heating wood, it is a good firewood for outside fire pits, as well as for people who need help starting their wood that is wet or they split themselves this year, which is a lot of people. I actually put a lot of uh, poplar at my Rosa stand during the winter times because a lot of people use that to start their stoves when they have wood that they split too late and it's kind of wet and they need help starting it. Um, so those are my two reasons for why I'm splitting poplar wood. I sell a ton of this. I sell a ton of bags at the road um, during the summer months. So with these guys, these are wooden dunners. Four way, done. Stuff like this, throw it in there. Stuff like this, throw it in there. I should be able to split a couple of these at a time. I do like to split poplar a lot smaller than the rest of the wood just because I do mainly use it for bags. jam there. Little piece got the wheel in the belt.
All right, we got our first empty tote. I just left everything on the table because I still got to split this one. You can see a lot of these uh, pieces fell off because it was building up a lot. Um, that took me 10 minutes, roughly. Um, the conveyor did jam once and then I kept moving the uh, camera. Um, so 10 minutes per tote. Uh, honestly, guys, I was finding myself resplitting stuff that didn't need to be resplitted. It was just kind of like a habit, like I pick it up and put it on the splitter, you know? So a lot of these pieces are pretty small, um, which is good for me because, like I said, I'm using them for uh, bundle wood. This stuff right here was already in here. I just, instead of pulling that out, most of that was good looking wood. All right, guys, so the first one's done. It took me 10 minutes, even with the uh, conveyor getting stuck there, a piece uh, got between the belt and the wheel. I was kind of finding myself splitting wood that didn't need to be resplit, um, just because I was pulling it from a basket, putting it on the splitter, and not even thinking about it. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna split this other one, see if I can speed up just a little bit. So the last one took 13 minutes to do. So the first tote was 10, this was 13. I'm thinking because I had to come further over and it was kind of at an angle. Um, I had a lot of wood dropping right there that I had to keep clearing. You can see there's still some there. Um, <clears throat> but this is what we ended up with with those two IBC totes. Obviously I split into more pieces so it's gonna show more volume. Um, I just didn't know how much. This was, pretty much full up to like a foot and a half so we could really count that little bit that up top and this was all empty so yeah I mean it's it turned from two to almost three totes um, I would say two and a half totes so not really a big deal all right guys so that was a big difference in uh, time there and I'm really trying to figure out why it had that big of a difference and I don't know if it was because it had bigger pieces or smaller pieces and let me explain why I think that. I got a couple pieces pulled here. I'm gonna show y'all what I mean by the size of wood. Uh, what would be faster or slower if I was to process the wood in that size and then take it over to the wolf ridge and split it. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is the big piece, right? This is a six inch piece. Um, I have a couple eight inch pieces, but this is a, a four way one split, right? So I put it on there, I split it, I'm done. With this much wood, it'll probably make three pieces out of this, right? Or do I split to this size wood? This is perfectly fine for heating. This is a size that a lot of people like. Uh, but for me, this time, I'm splitting down to pieces like this 
because I'm looking for bundle grade wood. So this kind of what uh, this was kind of a mixed test. I'm gonna have to redo it for sure. But it may, it's a good idea for me to see what I'm dealing with here because this piece right here, I was resplitting. I probably didn't have to. I mean, this one's a little bit bigger than this one. This one's like the max I'd want to do, and this is a little too big for what I want to keep. Just because the thing about it, guys, is it's not about the size of wood that people want to burn. It's about how fast the wood dries. So that's why I split into small pieces. Should I split big, like a one-way split, so this would turn into three pieces, or should I split kind of small, because it would work for burning wood, but won't work for bundle wood, so I'd have to re-split this. So in this case, I'd split this and get two pieces, where I'd split this and get three pieces. So I'd get one extra piece with this one versus that one. But that's only because I'm splitting down to this size. So there's a lot to think about, guys. Y'all drop in the comments what y'all think. Like I said, this would work if I was selling it to a customer heating in their fireplace. Um, but I wanted to get this this time because it was popular. All right, guys, that was a lot of blabbing, but I hope y'all are picking up what I'm putting down. I hope y'all understand what I'm getting at. There's a lot of different ways to split this wood, um, and it's my goal and my job to find the most productive way to do that. Um, but all in all, let's just take the average of each tote. So I did a tote at 10 minutes and I did a tote at 13 minutes. So let's take an average of 12 minutes. Um, I do four totes per cord. I don't believe in three totes thrown in as a full cord. Four totes thrown in as a full cord. So if I times 12 by four, it's 48 minutes. So I'm, in, I'm adding 48 minutes to my splitting process of the processor. So if I split a cord in an hour and a half, which it might be faster than that, or it might be slower than that, I'm not sure. I'm just taking the average right now. I feel like I could get an average hour and a half on a cord. Um, but we add 45 minutes to that, two hours and 15 minutes. Um, if I look at my wolf ridge and my chainsaw process, I'm right at three hours and three and a half hours per cord. Um, so I'm saving 45 minutes there at a minimum. Um, but honestly, I'm probably saving more than that just because if I can keep going with the processor, versus with the Wolf Ridge. The processor takes no effort to run. The Wolf Ridge takes a lot of effort to run. Also, the chainsaws take a lot of effort to run. So, all in all, I still think after resplitting, it's faster to use the processor than the Wolf Ridge and a steel chainsaw. So anyways, guys, I hope you like this content. I hope uh, I can bring more of this because this is interesting to me, I'm trying to figure out the most productive way of uh, resplitting. So you're gonna see some more of these videos. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.